Hi everyone. In this video, I wanna talk about how to use Dask effectively on a single machine. Most of my videos are about how to process you know, 10 terabytes, 100 terabytes of data uh, with hundreds or thousands of machines running on the cloud. That stuff is really cool, but honestly, most people don't need that kind of firepower. Most people have problems that are you know, 10 to 100 gigabytes that can be processed really effectively with one machine. Honestly, most people don't even need Dask, right? But we're gonna talk about how to use Dask on a single machine, which can be a really effective and pragmatic way of using the project. Uh, so to start, uh, if you are running Dask, if you have Dask installed, you can set it up trivially using the local cluster option. That's gonna set up a bunch of Dask workers from a Python process that'll get cleaned up when the Python process finishes, and it's, you know, it gets set up in a second. It's really easy to use. This is great if you have local data or computations that don't require a whole lot of data movement. So here I'm processing you know, 100 tasks that each take a second using all the cores of my Mac mini uh, sitting on my desk. Uh, let's expand this out a little bit. Right. Sometimes you also have data that's remote and it might not be that much data, but there's still some question of how do you access it remotely? So, we sometimes see people using the cloud for this. I'm talk about a few different ways of using still a single machine and the cloud and how you might sort of combine those things together. So the first option is actually just keep running with it locally. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have uh, fiber internet in my town. So I actually can process this data set. I live in Texas. This data set is in Virginia. I'm downloading the data across the United States, but it's, it's feasible to do. This is option number one. Uh, it's probably not the most efficient option. It also costs some money. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop that. And let's talk through some other options. Something we often see people do is they'll set up a VM in the cloud. They'll log into their cloud console. They will create an instance. They'll SSH into that. They'll install you know, Conda or Anaconda. They'll install all their packages. They'll probably clone some Git repositories to make sure their, their own code is available. They'll then probably set up some remote execution environment like JupyterLab, like what I'm using here, or maybe VS Code has some excellent remote execution techniques. Um, and they'll go and do some work, right? They'll, set, they'll keep that up for a few weeks while they work on their project. And once they're finished, they'll tear all of that down. That process works. We've seen that work really well for people. Um, it keeps everything on one machine, so it's simple. You don't have to worry about sort of security or authentication except to connect to that machine. Uh, but it's not, it's not very pleasant to me. I like working on my laptop. I like having all of my local uh, tools. I like using Vim. I like using different IDEs. Um, that approach doesn't seem as comfortable to me. What I do, unsurprisingly, is I use Coil. Um, I, oops, I should have started that one moment. Uh, what I often do is I'll create a single um, a cluster so if I don't need a whole lot of firepower, but I still want data locality, I will create a cluster with a single worker running in a region that is close to that data, right? And that's what's happening here. Now with normal Dask, this would be a pain, so I have to make a Docker image, I have to have this right its files, I have to set up security. Uh, Coiled handles all of that for me. It's looking at my local Conda packages, looking at my local pip packages. It's seeing I've got some local dev development packages. It's creating wheels for those. It's doing a lot of work to make the VM that I'm creating in the remote region look pretty identical to my local Mac mini. Um, and I really appreciate that. It allows me to quickly create a remote worker, do some work, tear it down, and not worry about a lot of setup like I had to do with sort of the remote VM experience. I also get to keep using my local development flow Right, I haven't left this same notebook. I'd have to switch to a different notebook, for example. This is gonna run in about a minute. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward the video another sort of 30 or 40 seconds, and we'll get started again once it's done. Great, all finished. Took another like 30 seconds or so. Now, I can just switch my local cluster off to my remote cluster, my remote worker, I should say. I run that same exact computation, uh, but now, the worker's doing all the work really close to the data, and it's gonna, just gonna send that small result back across the continent. Um, 
still, I think it could be a little bit faster. Um, you know, we should probably move this to be, you know, not one worker, but maybe four really small workers, maybe, you know, four or two cores each, although we'd get better bandwidth. But the point here is that even if you don't need a lot of scale, uh, just being close to your data can have a lot of value. And I think tools like Coiled can give you, you know, minute by minute, uh, a worker that's close to your data, uh, which might be, you know, might be a more convenient or less convenient approach than setting up a VM for a long period of time. I like it because I don't have to log into some other machine. Another approach here would be a hosted notebook service, something like SageMaker or Google's Vertex AI or any of the excellent Jupyter Notebook companies out there like Notable or Hex or Saturn or I'm probably missing half a dozen. Um, those are great, especially if you want a really uniform environment for your team. Again, I kind of like doing things my own way. I don't want to be sort of constrained to um, a specific environment. I also don't want someone else tracking my development state. I want to keep my own development state on my machine. We have a slightly different approach to notebooks at Coil. This is actually something we have historically not worked on. We don't really work on notebooks a bunch. But we started playing with Coil Notebooks, which is a different take. So I'm gonna make a cool notebook um, and let's, I'm gonna do a couple things. So the hosted notebook services create a new development environment for you in the cloud. Our approach is to always use your local machine to store all of the development state. And so we're gonna synchronize both the software environment from my machine up to that remote machine. We're also gonna synchronize all of the files with the live syncing service, which is fun. Uh, I also usually use this when I want like a single very large machine. So let's go get like a 64 core machine, for example. Um, yeah. So again, this is going to use the same infrastructure of Coiled. Coiled is really good at standing up VMs that look like your computer on the cloud. Um, but instead of running Dask, it's going to run Jupyter. Um, it's going to run just one large VM running Jupyter Lab. And it's gonna give us all the same sort of coiled magic to make sure everything looks the same. Uh, so again, it'll take about a minute to set up. So I'm gonna fast forward the video and we'll see each other again in about a minute. Okay, so that instance is now running. It's running Jupyter. We're now setting up a file sync service. This uses a technology called Mutagen, which is actually really cool. Uh, I can make an edit on my machine in Texas and about a second later, it'll show up on the machine in the cloud. I can create a new data file on the cloud and a second later it'll show up in Texas. So I've got my new notebook here. It looks exactly like, I've even got like all the same files, I've got this script. Um, I can go ahead and I can, I can make a new file here, maybe test. So this is running in the cloud. If I go and I look at that on my laptop, it's now there, right? I can edit, test, I can say hello. I can save that and now on my cloud machine, it's sitting there, right? Very cool stuff. Um, I can also open up the notebook that I had before, right? And let's, let's create just a local cluster. I'm just gonna use Dask locally um, and let's just go ahead and look at that data and compute it. Now using those 64 cores sitting on that machine in the cloud, this will run probably faster than it was running on my machine in Texas. Um, that's great. If I wanted to, you know, I could, you know, I could save that as a text file. You know, I think I can do string of the results. Probably that'll work. Great. And now I can go and I can look at my local thing and I've got that here locally. Right. And so this again is another approach to use Dask on a single large machine. But in this case, it is a single large machine that is closer to my data. What's nice is that I can still do all of my development on my machine and just use the remote machine for execution, right? If I wanted to, I can make this into a Git repository and, or I could email this, it's a trivial thing to do. So that's it. Again, we saw a few different ways to use Dask on a single machine. The first, if you don't need data proximate computing, just use local cluster. It's super easy. 
Uh, second, we saw things about setting up a VM in the cloud. Great approach. There's also notebooks, great approach. So a couple other things maybe you weren't thinking of. Using Coiled with a single worker, not for scale, but for data locality, or Coiled Notebooks. Uh, if you want to learn more, there's lots on our docs, uh, docs.coiled.io. So thanks again for your time. Cheers.